at the end of the day, who should be paying for the internet? Who should it be and in what manner? So, um, Steve, would you like to? Well, I, th I think at the end of the day, customers pay for the internet. I mean, you know, we, I mean, I just the, the communications industry invested $25 billion last year in infra internet infrastructure. So it all gets to customers in one way or another of one company or another. The question I think is, which customers pay for the internet? So hmm. obviously customers who subscribe to, you know, Comcast Internet Access Service or our Internet Access Service, they're paying a lot of the cost of the internet. Um, but there's also the opportunity for other entities, the ones, 30% of the traffic in prime time is Netflix traffic. So 30% of the, the peak load is Netflix. So the question is, should the customers who watch Netflix movies and Netflix and its customers pay some portion of those costs that are being for, put on the internet? And, and, that, and that's the question, but at the end of the day, Let's face it, customers are going to pay for it. It's just a question of whether you attribute some of the costs to what you consider the cost causers. Those are causing that, that peak demand. And, uh, and so I, I think there's value in the two-sided market. I think there's value in getting costs more allocated to cost causers. I do want to respond to the hostage question um, <laughs> because I don't think that's a fair analogy. I think that customers are always a hostage of, if you want to use that term, of the provider of the good or service they want to purchase. I mean, they're no more hostage of internet service as they are wireless service or cable TV service or what show, you know, uh, HBO is going to put on at seven o'clock tonight. So, you know, at, at some point, yeah, I guess, but, but it's, 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 that's a pretty strained analogy. And, and I do think that when we, when we get into questions about the interconnection between, um, provide between network owners, peering versus transit agreements. That's not net neutrality. That's an interesting topic, but it's a different topic. Hunter? Um, yeah, so uh, not for or against. Everybody has to pay for infrastructure. Um, my point was that uh, the term hostage brings to mind at least it's certain visions and pictures. So that's OK. Um, at the end of the day, network operators, like a content provider, for example, um, or a social media company or an internet search company or something, <clears throat> um, they don't have to buy transit. They could build their own network and they can peer it all off. And there happens to be one really big internet search engine company with some pretty smart people that they hired a decade ago or more that knew this. And they went and they built their own network. And they freaked a lot of people out when they did it because they couldn't be stopped. They essentially built their own internet. And they created the rules upon which people would connect and peer with them. They turned it around and they cut the ISP out of the middle and they peered off not 100% because that's kind of impossible, but damn near as much as they could. Because they could. Because they could go around. End users can't go around. You're going to pick from one of a handful of mobile operators and that's it because the United States is a big country and it costs a lot of money. I know, I'm building a big network, it costs a lot of money. <clears throat> so end users don't have choice. Yeah, they have choice. It's an optical illusion that they have choice. They have a few people that they have to pick from that are all sort of kind of close in the same price range and are all saying the same sort of things about both sides are going to pay. But if you go to the network operators, which again, I think the network operator was the winner in this whole situation because whether you call it peering or net neutrality or whatever, it's about control. This is all about control. Who has control? And whoever has control makes the rules. And if somebody's standing in front of you saying, I have control, and they're telling you what the rules are and you don't like them, and you can go around them, they don't actually have control. And that's where the network operators, the independents, who could go out and get their own fiber and light it and buy equipment from one of the many hardware vendors and go find a neutral interconnection point and get a rack and set up their stuff and cross-connect, they don't have to be told what the rules are. They could go make their own rules. <clears throat> 